My name is David Broson. I'm a full CA PhD student at the Chemical Engineering and Biotechnology Department. One part of my project is focusing on the development of new material for the treatment of wastewater, and especially the removal of synthetic dyes from wastewater. So synthetic dyes are chemicals developed in the 19th century, which are now used in a lot of different uh, um, domains, such as the textile, paint, plastic, food, or cosmetic industries. If you consider only the textile industry, uh, more than 10,000 tons of dyes are used every year, and part of them finish directly in effluents, leading to potential health, environmental, or economical concerns. So to tackle this, different methods have been uh, developed to remove those dyes from water. So among them, uh, you have the physical methods, which uh, basically uh, consist in physically remove uh, the synthetic dyes using adsorption, filtration, or coagulation. You have the chemical methods in which you will add some chemicals to react with your dye to destroy it and generate less hazardous species that can stay in solution. Or you have the biological methods uh, using directly enzymes or bacteria in order to kind of digest um, the synthetic dyes for you. So this method works, but they also present some limits, limits in terms of cost. It can be quite expensive to implement. Uh, limit in terms of safety, safety due to the chemicals you may use for some methods, and also concern about the production of secondary waste. For example, what do you do with the sludges you obtain at the bottom of your tank after coagulation? So to tackle this, different methods have uh, a new kind of range of methods have been developed you, uh, called uh, advanced oxidation processes. In this one, the idea is to directly use light to destroy the dye for you. So on this kind of idea, we work on the development of a new composite material uh, uh, called magnetic photocatalyst, composed uh, offering magnetic and photocatalytic properties. So by combining different elements, such as silica, iron oxide, and titania, it's possible to develop an, uh, a material of um, offering adsorption properties uh, responsive to a magnet, and uh, offering photocatalytic properties, which mean that they can adsorb UV light or visible light in order to, um, in order to create highly reactive species which can help to destroy synthetic dyes directly in solution. So here's an overview of how we prepare the system. First, we have two phases, an aqueous phase composed of nanoparticles and an oil phase. So the first step is to mix those two phases together. You create what we call an emulsion. So it's water droplet dispersed in oil. So in the water droplets, nanoparticles tend to repulse each other due to their surface charges. But when you add salt, you can uh, screen the charges and agglomerate all of them together, creating a kind of blob, which we call a bead. And the bead will be directly linked to the size of your water droplet when you add your agglomeration. And the last step would be just to clean your system uh, to clean your bits and to, um, to use it for your water treatment. So this method offers a lot of advantages. First, it's fast. Then it's easy. You don't need fancy equipment for that. It's safe. You don't need toxic chemicals and everything is done at room temperature. And it's uh, highly tunable. We observed that you could, we could easily modify the size of our bits by playing on the mixing speed. Uh, we can play on the morphology. So by adding some different chemicals inside the system, it was possible to move from a smooth surface to a rough surface, which could be interesting for adsorption. And the most important for us, you could combine the different metals you wanted inside. So we combined silica, iron oxide, and uh, titania as expected. And those system were then used uh, for water treatment. So for that, we test with two model dyes. So methane blue and rhodamine B. And we observed during your experiment that we could easily add some methylene blue um, on the surface of the beads, and we could photodegrade a uh, rhodamine B using UV light. And after the treatment, it was possible to recover the beads with a magnet and to reuse them again and again and again. So those results are really promising. We are now working on improving the system even more. Uh, so the first aspect would be to decrease the size of the, part of the beads in order to maximize the surface area. And the second aspect would be to try to make them responsive to visible light. 
which would be way more interesting than UV light because visible light, um, it would be cheaper with visible light. So I hope you are interested by uh, this application. Um, if you want to know more, you can contact my supervisor or myself. And um, thank you for your attention. Uh, see you maybe next year at uh, the Chemical Engineering and Biotechnology Department.